All right. Um, so we're talking, um, we're talking now strategies, specific strategies. And we had talked earlier about the importance of this differential use of attention. So we're going to attend more to what we want to see more of. So we're going to ignore low-level um, uh, negative behaviors, and we're going to attend at a higher level to appropriate behaviors, not just good behaviors, not just great behaviors, but appropriate behaviors. I have actually been um, in situations where we would set up a positive behavior plan, a very, very simple one, and we would go back two weeks later, and this has happened a long time ago, and this is very, very rare, um, but the child would have received maybe two stickers on that magic circle chart we talked about, two indicators of appropriate or positive behavior in two weeks' time. And I said, oh, my. <laughs> and the teacher would say, he hasn't done anything to attend to, appro uh, any, any appropriate behavior um, to attend to. And that's just not possible. That's just not possible in two weeks' time for a child not to have exhibited any behavior worth reinforcing. Right? That's, a, that's a problem in how we're looking at the behavior. That's not a problem in what they're exhibiting. Um, intermittent bursts of, behavior, of attention are a, a specific strategy, actually, because when we say attend to appropriate behavior, that seems very time consuming, and especially when we talk about doing it at a high rate. But what, the reality is that it doesn't take much to be attention. It can be a look. It can be a wink. It can be a thumbs up. It can be any sort of thing at all that lets that child know that they have your attention in that moment. It's just important that it occurs when they're exhibiting a behavior that is appropriate. Um, the goal for most kids is 20 to 50 times a day, right? So when you spend 35 minutes observing a kid with problem behaviors and you don't see any instances of that appropriate attention, then you know it's not happening frequently enough. Um, if it's praise, and it doesn't have to be, just be specific. Nice job sitting still. Um, one strategy, one little uh, cheat kind of that I teach parents a lot is uh, called, we call it 50 or 20 pennies in a pocket because we, we usually go for the 20, right? That's our goal. 20 pennies in a pocket. So you use 20 dried beans, 20 pennies, 20 of something in one pocket and you start the day. And every time you remember to give this brief intermittent burst of attention, you move a penny from one pocket over to the other. And your goal is that by the end of that day or the end of that time period, you've moved all the pennies from here over to here. So just like our kids need tangible reminders and tangible cues, we do too. And that's a good way to do it. If, if your classroom teacher, you're standing up in front of the classroom, you're doing a lot of, of teaching there, put a large sticker or another colorful item on the wall and use that as your cue. So every time your eye hits that very colorful thing, that's your reminder to attend positively to somebody in the room. It can be that wink, it can be that thumbs up, it can be that brief verbal praise, something. And you just make that your habit. Every time I see that sign, that red and black sign on the, on the front, of the room, I'm gonna say, Anitra, nice job sitting so quiet. Thank you. I'm gonna wink at Beth and whatever. Okay. Um, positive attention, as we've already said, it can't just balance negative attention. It actually has to outweigh it, preferably three to one is the ratio that we shoot for. Kids with behavioral or developmental challenges, as we noted earlier, access negative attention a lot. We call it corrective feedback, but it really is negative attention. So it takes some work for them to go for the positive attention instead. Um, we talked about the magic circle chart. I, I have here a couple of examples of charts that we use and that I think are pretty user friendly in both home and school settings. Um, where's my magic circle? Hold on. There it is. Okay. I'm going to start there because we already talked about it. This is the magic circle chart. And so as we noted, it's just a simple sticker chart, but periodically, randomly throughout it, it has these magic circles. So what you would do is we, have, we, we just go to Walmart and we get these little teeny tiny smiley face stickers, but you can also use stars or whatever that fit neatly in those boxes. And we set a target behavior. So we're going to um, set a target behavior and every time we see that behavior exhibited, we're going to put a sticker there. And every time we land on a magic circle, we're going to up the ante. So that's where that 50 cents comes into play or maybe drawing from a grab bag or some other reinforcer that's a higher level is going to happen. 
So when you use that, yes. Um, yeah. What's the ideal time frame? Like, like I don't know if that's a hundred circles there, or what's the time frame to use that in? It doesn't matter because of how it's designed, because the reinforcement is happening along the way. So, so sometimes we'll say, like if we're using it in a home setting, and especially with an older child, we'll say, and when you fill up the whole magic circle chart, then you get to go to out for ice cream with your parents or whatever. So that's then that kind of cherry on top. But it doesn't matter for the other because the reinforcement is coming at a steady rate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to say our goal is that we fill this entire thing out within a week. Because you're attending and every time you recognize the appropriate behavior, you're getting a sticker. Periodically, you're getting a magic circle, so it's happening. So you go straight across or down? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter because they're random. And so you're going to land on them periodically no matter which way you go. And you just mark in the box every time they <laughs> display the targeted. Yeah, and ideally you mark in it and then you give some verbal feedback as well. So you're like, oh my gosh. Look what you just did. You just earned another sticker. That's awesome. So you're getting the verbal praise. They're getting the sticker, which is in and of itself reinforcing for many kids. And then periodically you get the magic circle. And so then that ups the ammy. So does it you know matter if the adult or the child is putting the sticker nope. on? Nope. Doesn't matter. As long as, as long as the adult is attending to the exhibiting of the behavior. Yes. Nope. They're going to do what? Well, I mean, you got to. You have to go in some kind of a straight line. You can't go all willy nilly on me. I've seen it where they've done it. Right. Yep. And then it is. And I think it can work. I mean, it, I mean, this is random. I mean, I, I guess, you know, you could go any direction, but any direction you go, as long as you consistently go that direction, it's going to be equally random, right? Um, and it doesn't have to be a secret to the kid. And in fact, much of the time for our kids who lack frustration tolerance and impulse control, they need to know it's coming, right? They need to know, like, okay, pretty quick here, I'm going to get one, so I'm going to be working for it. So the surprise element to me doesn't necessarily add anything. And this is kind of another version of the same thing. And we have a variety of these. And these actually came years ago from a book called The Tough Kid Toolbox. I don't know if any of you ever saw that book. Um, but it had a variety of these. Um, we call them dot, just dot to dots. And they have different numbers of lines on them, basically. So some are spaceships. We have Pegasus. We have panda bears. We have pizza slices, race cars, different things. And the, and the idea is basically the same. You set kind of um, a goal of a, a, of a certain target behavior. So we sort of say, um, say we're working with siblings um, in clinic, and they have, um, they've had a high rate of fighting and being mean to each other recently. And so the goal for the little boy is, we want you to um, really work this week on being nice to your sister. And every time your mom notices that you're doing something nice, uh, around your sister to your sister, she is going to call your attention to it and you're going to get to fill in a, a line on your um, on your dot to dot chart. And when you get all the way around, something cool is going to happen because, you know, this is only like 17 instances, right? And usually, if this is for a really young kid, then we would pick, uh, you know, the, the behavior is going to be high enough frequency that they're going to be able to do it pretty quickly. But what saves us in this instance is that the verbal praise and the getting to do the dot to dot is, in, the, is a, in and of itself for most kids reinforcing. So yes, they get a prize at the end, but that's not all they're working for. So they're working for the verbal praise. They get to draw the line typically on this one. Somebody asked before if it mattered who gave the sticker on the magic circle. For the dot to dots, the kiddo usually does. And then this is one years and years and years ago that we sort of made up. Because we realized that little kids in particular and little kids with um, behavioral health issues, so for example, on the autism spectrum or ADHD kids, um, a lot of times have very specific interests, interests that they like. And those interests are highly motivating. And so you can get online and you can download coloring sheets of about anything known to man that might be particularly reinforcing to a little person. You can make your own darn dot-to-dot -dot chart. 
And furthermore, you can, you can alter how long it takes to complete it. So in this case, we just went right around Spidey's back and, and, and down his arms there, start to end, and very short completion time. And this particular chart we used a long time ago for a little kiddo who had a lot of medical complications um, and, went, and had to be um, tube fed. And so when kiddos early on have to be tube fed, what happens? Attachment or form sometimes. Sometimes. And, and just very practically, what happens to their eating? Sometimes they don't know how to swallow, but even more often, um, oral feeding is just not reinforcing like it is to most of us. So the taste and the texture and the process of, of uh, eating is just not reinforcing. And so what happens for a lot of our medically handicapped kids is that they get to the point where they don't medically have to be tube fed anymore. They have the capacity to eat orally, but they have no interest, no motivation in doing it. And so that's where we work behaviorally with them to encourage and we do that literally a bite at a time. And so this particular dot to dot chart was used with a little guy. Every time he would take a bite, he would get to fill in a line on his dot to dot chart. And when he got all the way around it, if he got all the way around it by the end of the meal, something cool happened. And I don't even remember now what it was, a grab bag prize or probably something Spider-Man related, I'm sure at the time. So you can tailor that that way for specific, specific kiddos. Things to keep in mind. Um, when we were just talking about this on break too um, with one of, one of the attendees. Uh, any program that we do to reinforce behavior and to build behavior must be set up so that students earn reinforcers early in the process and often in order to be motivating. Um, and what I said to, to uh, the lady I was talking to is, I would really like to win the lottery. But I played a couple of times and I didn't win so I stopped buying tickets. And that is so, so true of our kids on behavior plans. If we, we can set up the best plan in the world with the most motivating reinforcer, and if they don't access it pretty quickly, they're gonna lose interest and they're gonna stop buying a ticket. So, a um, couple things happen. If time passes, and the time varies depending on age that we wanna look at, but if time passes and kids are not completing their dot to dot, or they're not earning their reinforcer, or they're not receiving that certain percentage that we've targeted of, of smiley faces. One of two things is happening, or both. Either our expectation is too high, or the reinforcer is not motivating enough, or both. So we need to look at it quickly um, and revamp it. And it's always easier to make the goal more stringent, but it's really hard to back it up, right? So if you say, um, you go two days without a tantrum and you get this prize um, and they go a while and they don't earn it, then our tendency is to say, okay, we'll go one day. <laughs> you know, it's hard to back it up, right? It's easier to say, okay, you go half a day and without a tantrum and you earn a prize, that's awesome, good job, set them up for success. You've got something to reinforce, they access the, the motivator, they're even more motivated now, they're good to go. It's like if I, if I played, if I bought those lottery tickets and I won like 20 bucks, right? I would have bought more tickets. They didn't have to give me the whole 23 million. You, so we can get kids invested with short increments of success and then build from there.